Hey guys, it's Sandals here. Uh, I've been playing Windows 3.1 games for a while now, and a few people have asked how I get these games running on modern systems. Uh, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible for the people who don't have any experience in emulation, but at least have basic computer skills. Uh, before we start though, I just want to offer a few alternatives for people who just want to run specific games with minimal setup. Uh, the first port of call would obviously be GOG or Steam, as they've managed to get a lot of the more popular games running on modern systems. Uh, if you want to play something a bit more obscure, uh, there's a blog called The Collection Chamber, where a fella called Biffman has set up hundreds of games to run on Windows 10 through standalone installers. Um, I've played a few of his um, just when I've had trouble getting certain games to run. Uh, like we played Wrath of the Gods uh, just the other day and we did the um, Star Trek FMV games. Uh, I used his builds for that as well. Uh, if you want to play some of the more popular Windows 3.1 games like uh, Ski Free and Chips Challenge, uh, I found a build called the Depot Windows 3.1 Pack. Now that's it's got a version of Windows 3.1 that's got 70 games pre-installed and it runs through something called PCEM. Uh, I'll leave the links for these sites plus everything you need for this build in the description for the video. Uh, before we start, this tutorial may or may not get the program you want to run. Uh, I won't be able to offer specific troubleshooting advice, but this video will hopefully give you a basic idea on how things work and you can just fix any problems on your own. Uh, I've learned a lot about getting computers to run just from fiddling around and sometimes I've, I've actually had more fun, you know, trying to get it to run rather than actually playing it. So uh, there's that as well. Uh, there's also heaps of other guides floating around on YouTube and the internet itself that'll probably tell you something I've missed. Um, so to run Windows 3.1 on a modern computer, I use an emulation program called DOSBox. It's a program that lets one computer system imitate another in order to run games and programs on older or incompatible systems. Uh, I also use a program called Demon Tools uh, that'll take an image file, which is a digital conversion of a CD or a DVD, and it'll mount it on a virtual disk drive on your computer. Uh, I'll cover the main points for this video, but if you want to read through a guide at your own leisure, I recommend the one on a forum called Vogons. Um, it's actually the one I use to create my build. Uh, so you want to start by creating a folder on your computer. And you can name it whatever you want, but remember where it lives, as you'll need to type in the path on your config file later on. Uh, when you install DOSBox, it creates two shortcuts. One is the executable for the program, and the other one is for the a shortcut to the config file, which we'll need in a second. Uh, the next step is to install Daemon Tools. Uh, when that's installed, you want to go into your settings, and actually, there's something you need to tweak. Um, it's here. It's You've got to set this to mount to existing virtual drive, because uh, by default, when you mount a disk image, it will actually just assign it to the first available drive letter. Uh, we For the config file in DOSBox, we actually need to keep it to something specific. Because um, the config file will be looking for that um, folder, uh, that drive letter, basically. All right. Um, yep, we covered that. Yeah, so the next step is to go into your DOSBox config file. Just give me a sec and I'll make it a bit bigger. Yeah, there we go. That's easy to see. And there's heaps of settings. Uh, leave it all as default for now because you can tweak stuff a bit later on if you need to. Uh, but we want to go right down to the bottom. So it's got a thing saying lines in this section will be run at startup. You can put your mount lines here. Now, what that means is, um, yeah, so DOSBox has got a mount command. And what that does is it will assign the folder we created earlier as uh, the hard drive it uses and the virtual drive we set up in Daemon Tools as the CD-ROM drive. Um, so these are the three lines you basically need. Um, so the lowercase letters after the command is 
uh, the drives you want to set it up as in DOSBox. So the hard drive is usually the C drive and your CD-ROM drive is usually the D drive. Um, this next part is the actual path that you want DOSBox to look in basically. So you know, the folder I've got on the computer is called old games. So it has to be C backslash old games. Um, my virtual drive usually comes up as F. So I put it as F backslash. And this little thing here says, um, it basically specifies that this drive is going to be your CD-ROM drive. So this is for T for type and this is for CD-ROM. You can set that to floppy and a couple other things as well based on, yeah, what you want to do with it. Um, what was I up to now? Windows 3.1 is still not classified as freeware despite being 30 years old. Uh, so for legal reasons, I can't specifically tell you where to download it for free, uh, but you can find it with a simple search. Um, you need to try and find a version that ends with .iso, .cue, or .bin, as these files, th those are the extensions for CD images, and that's what we mount in our virtual drive. Um, so I've got the Windows CD set up already. Now you'll see here, so it's trying to run the commands for uh, DOSBox. So it starts in Z drive, and it goes mount CC old games, drivers mount as local directory, mount C, F, CD ROM, drive D is mounted as a CD ROM F. Um, so I'm not sure I should, if, no, I should probably cover this bit because, yeah, not everyone remembers uh, the old DOS commands, but. Um, the ones we used to use in DOS in the 90s still work here, essentially. Um, so what you usually do is go D colon, that switches us to the D drive. Uh, the next command you need is called DIR. Uh, it will bring up the full list of all the files that are on this drive. So we need a way to step through it, essentially. So you go DIR front slash P. And this brings up the list and then you just hit any button, just sort of flick through. Uh, the one you're after in this pile uh, will be setup. So this should be, yeah, setup.exe essentially. That is the one you want. And then you skip through all the files. So setup. Yep, we've already got uh, Windows installed at the moment. Um, so we don't have to do anything, but you guys will have to follow through these prompts essentially. Uh, and, oh, it's actually crashed for me. Okay. Uh, another helpful, uh, keyboard shortcut in DOSBox is control F10. It'll actually free your mouse cursor from the window. So I'm just going to close that quickly. Um, so if you've installed windows. And once that's done, you can then boot it up again. Uh, so it should usually be installed as C Windows. Uh, normally you can just type in win. Uh, but no, we need a CD command, which will be CD Windows, because that's where it lives. Uh, if you want to get a step back, it's CD backslash or um, what's the other one? I think you can do CD dot dot. That just goes one step back. Uh, but you've seen me do this on stream a hundred times. But yeah, we'll bring up Windows. Hey, you guys. This is actually my viewpoint. I usually run it windowed. Um, so we've got everything set up. Now, when you guys do this, um, you won't have any sound. Uh, and the graphics will actually be set at a... I think it's something ridiculous. It's like the default is 640 by 480 and the colors is like 16 colors. We don't want that. So what you're gonna to need to do is actually install um, graphics and sound card drivers. Um, I'll just go to the site where I found these at is uh, Sierra Help. And it actually gives you a quick rundown and a guide on how to install the, just here is the video card drivers. But you can go up here and it has, ah, or I had a window set up. 
So you use, yeah, for my builds, I use the S3 graphics card drivers and the Sound Blaster 16 ones. So they'll be zip files. You unzip them into separate folders in your Windows folder. Oh, well, your Windows DOS box folder. And the other thing is the folder names actually need to be less than eight characters. Uh, DOS had an issue with that. If it was longer than eight, it would put in like a weird tilde and a one. Um, so just make those folders S3 and SB16. Uh, so we bring up... So because I've already got them installed, I'll just run you through the, um, the Windows one quickly. So it's usually Windows Setup, Change System Settings and usually set this to what you want. Um, and then it'll restart Windows and boot you back in. You've also got the file manager if you wanna check through your folders. Um, so I should be able to show you where the sound card drivers are. So there's SB16. Yeah, see, you can see it here. So this was SB16 drivers. It's had to put like a tilde and one to meet that eight character limit. Uh, I can't remember if you can install these from Windows, though. Yeah, okay. So you'd have to jump out of Windows and manually install this through DOS with the commands that I showed you um, to install the Sound Blaster drivers. S3 ones um, was the same way. You'll go into here, I think. You have to go right down to, yeah, other display. And then you'd have to actually manually type in the path uh, that the drivers are in. So I think it's C colon backslash S3. And yeah, then you just pick your driver from the list. But we've already got them set up, installed, ready to go in Windows. Um, I think that's all I needed to cover. Um, so this will give you, yeah, essentially what my build is. So proper graphics drivers, proper sand card drivers. Oh, the other thing was um, a lot of programs use QuickTime, but sometimes the version of QuickTime that comes on the disk is may either be corrupted or an older version. Uh, you want to hunt around for uh, QuickTime 2.12, if you can find it. That's the um, most stable version for Windows 3.1. Um, so the, yeah, there were a couple other things I wanted to cover. Uh, DOSBox has a few keyboard commands that are helpful. We covered control F10. Um, you'll hear me on stream talking about cycles. Um, what that is, is, uh, CPU, uh, when it does a cycle, it's how many, I think it's how many pro, uh, how many lines of code it can process within a second. And that would obviously get that number would increase as, you know, technology advanced and you got better CPU processors. But an issue with certain Windows 3.1 games is uh, the speed of a program is actually tied into that CPU speed. Um, so yeah, um, certain games, if you actually brand them on uh, a Pentium or something, would actually run too fast. But thankfully, DOSBox has a way uh, to turn cycles up and down. Uh, and that is F11 and F12. So if you want to speed up or slow down something, you just hit those buttons and tweak it as you need it. Um, now you're ready to play some games. Uh, so my go-to website is usually the Internet Archive. It's here. Uh, so when I mention archive.org, that's the one I'm talking about. And they just celebrated 25 years in operation. Uh, congratulations, guys. It's been really fun just checking out all this content that's on here. Um, lots of obscure stuff. They like have ebooks, uh, audio files, movies, and stuff. But yeah, I spend, you know, whole afternoons just scrolling through this to find um, programs I want to check out. Like he's, um, yeah, we've done Gus and the Cyberbuds. This is where I got it from. Um, so you can just download the ISO directly or uh, if you enter torrents, you can grab a torrent file as well. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, enjoy that, guys. And uh, if you do have issues like getting stuff running, leave a comment. I'll try my best to help you out. Uh, failing that, check out other guides and stuff. 
But um, yeah, hope that works for you. And yeah, enjoy playing some uh, Sweet House Retro games. <laughs>